hey, it's Kai Yanis, and this is just a new idea that I had where I'm taking some Kaiisms and I'm basically making it a show about silver linings. I don't have a title yet. I um, don't even have music or true intro, but it's just my way of throwing something out there and seeing if it works. So enjoy. Hey, so what's been going on? Now that we have some had some time to talk, you seem you seem like you've been a little grumpy. Are they okay? I mean, it's hard not to be right now. It's everything in the news is just bananas, uh, and I don't mean the, the kind that our daughter likes to have. I mean, just like it's very upsetting between the political stuff and now the coronavirus, and now just being stuck indoors. It's just like it's ridiculous, and it's hard to find kind of like the light at the end of the tunnel, so to speak. I know, and the whole level of uncertainty, and every hour, every day, something is changing in all of our lives around the world. Yeah, it's a lot It's a lot to keep up with, and I for sure um, empathize with you and feeling a little bit about that myself, but um, I've kind of been thinking a lot about the silver lining to this whole epidemic because I do believe that there are silver linings in, in everything. Um, you know, kind of in all negative as- aspects that happen to us. So the first silver lining to this is I'm getting more time with you and, and our daughter, you know? Like, I, I'm now home a lot, okay, all the time. So I get a lot more time with you guys. So I get more time to play with her upstairs and play with her downstairs. Oh, she likes to play. Um, and I get more time with you to like watch movies and and we don't have like anything that we're doing at night anymore that's scheduled. So we get more time to watch movies. And even last night we talked for a long time about, it was kind of like- A lot like, to talk about. <laughs> yeah, it was like a, kind of like a check-in conversation right because a lot of sometimes a lot of our conversation just involves oh what's going on with um with our child today and this is what happened and oh man this is something silly that happened at work and and that's kind of it but it was like a nice like checking conversation and you know it also with that getting more time with not just you guys but it makes me think okay um Maybe I can use this time now to have more conversations, longer conversations with my mom, talk to my sister more. You know, um, my dad's birthday's tomorrow, so I'm not really doing anything, so I'm not gonna feel as pressured for time. And um, yeah, so that that to me is sort of lining. What do, what do you think about that, that viewpoint? I mean, that's true. There's something that I've noticed too. I mean, I'm an introvert, so being inside is kind of, I mean, we were saying, you know, we talk, we've been talking about this, obviously, recently. And uh, it, it's not as hard for me to be indoors as it is for a lot of other people. Like, you know, right now this is happening during spring break, so all the spring break people are like, oh, man, I can't go party. And I'm like, I don't want to party anyway. It's like, know, you know, you see all these things on social media where introverts are like, oh, no partying, no clubs, no bars. And they're all like, okay, so life is normal. <laughs> um, so that part of it's not, it's just, it's more the uncertainty, like you mentioned. That's always been my biggest thing, whether it's with, health with family with jobs with relationships or whatever uh financial stuff that kind of thing my whole thing is not knowing what to expect and not knowing what's happening next and obviously i'm a movie person and there's movie theaters right now that are open really uh but it's in a way i also the other thing that i to bring to get back to your silver lining of it is that it feels to me almost like a a chance to kind of revert back a little bit to the way things were before technology was so focused and 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 kind of like it's a little bit of a a simpler time i was thinking about this recently because you know we drive we drive around and we you know we this we're not really like rushing to places it's not like as crowded places it's not like you know you're not dealing with commutes you're not dealing with the i don't know it just feels like yes we're still on technology a lot but it also feels like and like, and also thank goodness for technology. Yeah, well, yeah, obviously, but it's also you know, there's not as much. It feels like 
a simpler time in that we, as you said, we're not as busy. So, it, you know, there's more opportunities to go for walks and appreciate the little things and not feel like, oh, I got to go over here because I got to go meet this person because I got to go do this thing because I got to go to the, we're going to do this event or we're going to meet this person, you know, for a house, this friend or whatever. And so I feel like in that respect, it's also been a good opportunity to just kind of, as I said, people, I'm a, I'm a movie person, kind of like Zombieland style, you know, uh, appreciate the little things kind of thing. It's, it's sort of the mindset that I think fits this time. That's interesting. You actually brought up Zombieland. Because, Why? No, because, yeah, I mean, you have people in that movie, you know, movie that for years, it was, it was a zombie pandemic. Right. And that they had to live just in a house and hopefully wouldn't be get get the zombie virus zombie to attack them um but yeah they really had to be resourceful and do, do what they could to enjoy their their life because they were going to be eaten by zombies if they went outside so yeah that's in, that's yeah that's hopefully we're not living in the prequel to zombie land yeah. <laughs> yeah and i um and i like what you said there because that's a segue to my other silver lining with with the, the coronavirus and being you know being inside is that it does give more does give us more time to get caught up on things that we were too busy to do before so some of this weekend we're gonna be cleaning out some stuff from our house because we don't have anything else to do i also want to spend some time cleaning my house because i you know i have time to do it um just just I mean, do some more reading, um, talk to family members and just, just chill out. You know, I think we've all, all of us have been so busy just living our lives, going to work, having friends, been, spending time with our family and going to the beach, all of that commotion that we haven't slowed down and it, it's time to slow down. And we're get, being given this opportunity to do that. And that's a wonderful thing. And who knows how much all of our lives are going to change once this is over from just having this slow time and this, this, this chance to be at our house and enjoy what we have. I mean, I think that it's really going to build character and change all of us for the better. Um, and I know that we are all going to survive it. You know, we're going to get through it but it's gonna involve the entire community of our counties, our state, our nation, our world. And I'm already seeing how much we're uniting in this fight against this virus. And I work with people from around around the world. You know, I work with people in Singapore and India and Philippines and Mexico. And the team in Mexico, we've been in contact and they're getting the help that they need so they can socially distance themselves. Um, the people, the people I work with in India, they're already, they've, they're already working from home and have been, and they're kind of talking about the means of this. And we are even talking about having, um, there's even talks of regulations being pushed for things like this, for continuity of business plans. So that's how much is already changing our world, you know, for the better. Anything you wanted? I mean, I don't want to get too political and get into that whole thing, but it also does feel like this should have been something we should have had some kind of infrastructure to deal with, and it doesn't seem like we really did. Or if we had it, it was changed or cut back or trying to skirt around the the uh, elephant, the orange-skinned elephant in the room. But uh, it does seem like that part of it wasn't really we weren't really reacting in as quickly or as decisively as we can i mean we live in florida and this has been going on at least the last couple weeks in florida and only now the beaches are closing and restaurants are closing and it's like this should have been something that happened already right and it's also i think that the the states maybe were waiting on a federal response a white house response and instead it's the states that are making up their own decisions like California, I mean, they went on a national, a state of national emergency like a month ago, when they right. still didn't even have they still didn't even have any positive cases, 
that, that were confirmed, but they're like really they, they still don't. I think they do. They do now, now they do. They okay, do. yeah, but yeah. The they time, did at the time. At the time they, did. they did not. Yeah, I was gonna say because I thought they like, were really bad. No, I think now. it was actually I think it was the city of San Francisco called a national emergency. Right. And then I guess California started following suit. But even San Francisco said we know right now we don't have any positive confirmed cases, but because San Francisco is kind of like an epicenter for like the Asian community, and um, they wanted to make sure that they were taking taking that into account. And and that's the thing is I think we as a nation we don't think about the states as much as we do for the nation like girls like oh it's about the nation and obviously th- those policies matter those programs matter but this the states are really the, the governing body of this country because it's those state laws and policies that are really impacting the people the residents that that live there right so um and like i don't know exactly what happened with the governor and why it took so long for those beaches to close but you know he at least was doing what he could to say okay we're now going to say only uh, like 10 people and um and that was also more businesses and government bodies started taking more action once that cdc guidance came out last sunday once that guidance came out everything officially changed like then it started being okay we're not going to just socially be distancing ourselves. We're now just going to start closing things down because it's not even meeting the guidance. That's when we started realizing, okay, we may not be having any plans Memorial Day. And we do have plans <laughs> Memorial Day. We're supposed to we're supposed to go to a wedding for a family member of mine and I don't think that's going to happen with everything that's going on and with the 8 week they're think they're saying 8 weeks. You know, who knows? Yeah, going back to your uncertainty thing, it's also like I said, it's it feels like we're all in this together, but that's the citizens, and it feels like there's a failure in leadership, which means it's kind of a loss of faith collectively as a nation in how this is being handled and or the potential for a swift resolution. You know, it's they're called precautions because they're supposed to happen before things get bad. If things are already starting to get bad, that's a post-caution, I guess. That's yeah. not even a word for a reason. Yeah, and the thing is, we have, like, people people I work with in Mexico, they're already taking precautions. Like, the people I work with, they work in, a, like, a small, a small city, and they still haven't had any positive confirmed cases, but they're still, like, closing things down because they're taking precautions because they already know that this could be coming, and it could be coming because of the United States, too. Like you know, bringing things over the border or whatever. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's it's unfortunate, and and I don't know, I don't know what went wrong in Italy. From what I've read, a lot of what went wrong in Italy is the same thing that's going wrong here. That people didn't take it seriously. That people just kept living, going out, living their lives. And you know, Italy is a very bad place right now. You know, they're now in a worse place than China was. And it's interesting kind of um, with all of our eyes on China because now p- people in China are starting to recover and they're trying to see now what's going to happen with the virus. So like, so that's how they're, we were kind of already getting an idea about what's going to happen because China's been that guiding, that guiding force on what could happen. And um, I think we're in it for the long haul. Yeah, but in the meantime, it's all about, I guess, adjusting to this temporary hopefully new lifestyle find, trying to find ways to enjoy it and like you said the whole point of this conversation to find the silver lining in it and I guess you know spending more time with the people in your household is good you can't really hang out with friends or much or anything at this point but so let me ask you then well, uh, uh, let me ask yeah. let me ask you then for people that are feeling cut off from their social circle what you know if because I, you know, I would like to reach out to people and, you know, friends and, and, and you can do some of that in social media, but it's also it lacks the intimacy of having that face to face interaction. Is there what would you recommend to people listening for that? Um, if they want interaction. Yeah. To talk to their to their friends or family members that they can't literally can't see right now because everybody, including Gal Gadot and all, all these famous people are doing self quarantine and stuff. Well, I mean, I think that's what's so great about technology and, you know, social media and I mean I have a whole I have an iPhone and I have a folder that just said social media so it's 
Well, it's being, it's seeing what's going on through Facebook, which a lot of times is actually terrible because it's all about coronavirus. Because this is all that this is all that we pretty much talk about now, because it's you know altering all of our lives. Um, of course, there's Twitter. If you're into that, I'm not really. There's Instagram, but um, one thing I'm trying to get back into is an app I downloaded a while back called Marco Polo. So that gives you an opportunity to do like video chats without the person even being there. So it's like pre-recorded and then the person can watch it whenever they want. So I think that that would be a, and it kind of fell out of, I kind of stopped doing it, using it, but I want to get back to that. Because, this is a good opportunity. Yeah. And you know, and of course texting, um, the phone, I mean, like I, the other night I had a conversation with my mom for two hours because we didn't really have anything going on and we hadn't really talked for a while. And um, so you really can't really beat a phone call. I'm really getting to reach out and talk with people. And I, um, and when all this really started, because I've, I've been working from home since last week, but um, I know that kind of the, the self social distancing, self isolation more started happening earlier this week. So when that all happened, I reached out to all all my good friends just to check in, um, see what they were up to, see if they needed anything, just to say hi and let them know I was thinking of them. And um, you know, and I think that that went, I think that went a long way. At least with me, I think in my heart, like that felt good to reach out. So I definitely recommend just reach out to people. Um, don't be shy if you haven't, con- you know talk to that person for a while I'm sure they'd love to hear from you and I even say this to myself there are some friends that I need to reach out to them and kind of be like I know it's been a while but I want to check in on you and and say hi um but regarding the whole loved one thing um this is um so that's a silver lining for us but there are people that are in the situation that more time at home it can lead to bad things so um so I say as a silver lining with an asterisk attached with spending time with your loved ones that if you are a person and you're in an abusive situation, um, there are resources. Oh, I hadn't even thought of that. There are That's resources and please utilize them. Um, even if you're in self isolation, because you know, um, there's, there's still help out there. So like, so I say that one, yeah, with a silver lining asterisk silver lining and even uh, i mean i didn't know you were gonna go that like that serious with it i was gonna say even though you you know hanging out more having more time with your loved ones is ostensibly a good thing it's also like you need independent time to yourself like you were saying about doing more reading if you and i are constantly talking every night you can't really get any reading done so it's also like about having those boundaries to be like especially since we're both working from home right now to be like, okay, well, can you watch the child for a, little, for a couple hours? Oh, I can have do this, do work, or so I can, you know, do reading or take a shower and like have some a break. And I think that's important too that people listening know that you you know you need to take that time for yourself. Go for a drive or go for a walk or you know fire up Netflix or read a book or take a bath or whatever your thing is. Uh, I think it's important for people to also know that that that's important to respect each other's privacy and uh, not privacy, but like and boundaries. personal time to them, you know, especially for someone like, you know, I'm an introvert, as I mentioned, and I think you're kind of an ambivert. So, but we both have reached certain points where we're like, okay, I just want to kind of do my own thing now for a little bit. And we understand that about each other, but I feel like not all people are in a relationship with a partner that uh, has that same, shares that same value uh, or that same uh, you know, the same position on how valuable it is to have your own individual time. So I would also, I would add that to, uh, to your advice as well. Yeah. And that's, um, and that's good that you brought that up because, you know, um, cause you don't want to spend too much time with your partner. Right. Cause you drive each other the, crazy. Yeah. And you want to make sure that you're there for each other. Um, if you do have a child, because I know now that there are a lot of parents that have, are spending more time with their children than they've ever spent with them. So that's that's a ju- an adjustment. That's a big change. And um, and just being there for each other, supporting each other, remember that, remembering that you're a team. But you also don't want to spend so much time apart during the self-isolation that you are actually now self-isolated. Right. Um, so, 
you know, just yeah, finding that balance between spending time with your loved ones, but also spending time by yourself. So it's also it's a good opportunity, I think, for people to, like as you mentioned, do things that they would ordinarily do. You know, play. We busted out Chinese checkers last week for the first time in uh, forever. Um, you know, do some Instagram videos like you see a lot of famous people doing or start a podcast or, you know, jam out, practice with practice your instrument in the garage or whatever, you know, channel your creativity, I think, into it, too. And like, or make find a way to make it fun. So you're not just like, I'm stuck in here day 32, blah, 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 you know. And I know that like the, the great thing about social media, too, is that now people are having more group chats to do like drinking games together over you know skype and that's, that's, As... i don't know if i would be that kind of person but i think it's super cute and um it is a way of reaching yeah. out and having that contact um especially if you're an extrovert and you're like oh my god this I'm is crazy out. out people right you know well does did this talk help I think so. It's just it's it's a rough time, and it's it it helps to kind of talk things out like this. And hopefully, for people listening to this too, this has been kind of at least a little bit of a boost in what seems like it's been kind of a dark time right now. But honestly, this year has been really rough. It's like I think we were all hoping twenty twenty would be a fresh new you know a happy new year, fresh new start. And I feel like this has been like kind of a dumpster fire yeah, of a year. I so love far. that meme of America's Next Top Model. Oh, where yeah. Tyra is, I love that. Tyra We're is all rooting, rooting for you. Yeah. And then the, the girl I heard, don't remember, oh, Tiffany's, she's 2020. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Right. Pretty much. <laughs> That's the way it is. It sums it up. Well, um, that sums it up um, on this first episode of the show that is yet untitled. You can find me at the website bebold-bebrave.com. It also will link you to my YouTube channel. And you can also find me on Twitter at the Bulk Key LLC, as well as Instagram at K E L A N three seven three. Rob, where where can we find you? Uh, I host the Crooked Table podcast, where you can hear me talk about the movie, world of movie, film from a fresh angle. CrookedTable.com, wherever podcasts are found, and you can follow me personally on Twitter at Robert Yanis Jr. That's Y A N I Z uh, Junior Jr. All right, bye. <laughs>